Hello students, a very good afternoon to you all. In today's session of discussing the topics in digital electronics and microprocessors, we are going to discuss the logic gates part. The content in this logic gates will be useful for you to know about the fundamentals of the basic building blocks of digital electronics. By knowing these and getting a good knowledge of this, you will be in a position to design greater and bigger objects in digital electronics circuitry. So, we shall begin with the logic gates part 1. In this, you require a knowledge about the Boolean algebra. In Boolean algebra, in previous sessions, we have discussed about the basic laws of Boolean algebra. In digital electronics, as you know, there are only two digits, the binaries 1 and 0. In general, we are going to build the digital electronics not as single digits of 1s and zeros, but as a string or combination of these 1s and zeros. Since you theoretically know what are the various laws, now it is time for you to know how to implement these laws by using physical circuitry. For this, you require the logic gates. So, basically logic gates are the circuits that you are going to use to implement the Boolean algebra laws. So, here we can define a logic gate as an electric circuit that gives only two probabilities of output states that is the state can be a true state or false state or in digital electronics perception they are called as logic 0 and logic 1. These logics 0 and 1 vary from time to time depending on our requirement. The logic 0 or logic 1 is only a representation of a high level voltage or a low level voltage. In general, since we are going to use the clock pulse at the positive level and also at the negative level, we define two types of logic. They are the positive logic and the negative logic. In positive logic, a high voltage level is treated as logic 1 and a low voltage level as logic 0. Whereas, in negative logic, you are going to use the opposite type of effect. The logic 0 is corresponding to high voltage and uh, logic 1 is corresponding to the low voltage. Based on these logics, we can define the basic gates and uh, we can put these into two categories. The very basic building blocks are the NOT gate, the OR gate and the AND gate. Then by using combinations of NOT gate with OR gate, we are going to derive a NOR gate and the NOT gate in combination with AND gate, we are going to derive the NAND gate. These NAND, NAND gate and NOR gate are called universal gates because you can build or you can change the non NAND gate and NOR gate combinations 
to build even the basic gates like not or and and gates so we call these derived gates as universal gates also these basic gates are the fundamental building blocks of digital electronics so not gate or gate and and gate are the fundamental basic building blocks in this session we are going to discuss about what you mean by not gate what are its laws and uh, what is its truth table how to implement a not gate and uh, what is the electrical equivalent of this not gate similarly similar will be the treatment with or gate and and gate also so we shall begin with these gates the first and the fourth most is the not gate this not gate is also called as inverter this is the symbol for a not gate here a represents the input and uh, y represents the output logic level the not gate works on the principle of the output being not the same as input here y is the output and a is the input so if the input logic level is 0 the output logic level will be 1 will be y is equal to 1 and in contrary if input logic level a equal to 1 then the output will be y equal to 0 so here you can observe that the output is always opposite to the input logic level hence we call this gate as not gate in general inversion is opposite so this not gate which gives the output opposite to the input logic level is also called as the inverter you can look at the symbol the symbol consists of a triangle with a bubble henceforth we will be using the bubble only as the indicator for not gate the truth table of not gate consists of input and output with their logical conditions when the input was 0 you have observed that the output was 1 and the opposite is the case when input is 1 output is 0 here you can see that the expression representation of the boolean representation of this not gate is y equal to a bar this bar indicates inversion as electrical engineering students it will be easier for you to see how this not gate operates as equivalent to a switch here you can see a battery connected to a slot via a switch the switch is parallel to this slot where you can insert a load like a lamp so we shall see how this knot operation is going to be useful to us in electrical engineering circuits so here is the battery the switch s represents switch and the load lamp when the lamp is placed in its slot you can see that the lamp is not placed directly when the switch is closed the lamp is placed when the switch is open so the logical condition of this lamp will be treated as output and the input voltage will be treated as input here in this case the switch is open and the voltage is applied to this now when the switch is open input logic level a equal to 0 in this case what is going to be the output logical level you can see the current flowing through this 
and uh, what happens when the current flows through this. This current is flowing through a closed path via this lamp. Hence, the lamp has glow. You can see the glow as yellow color. So, when the input logical level switch level is 0, the output logical level is 1. That is, the load is getting voltage. Now, we shall see what happens when the switch is closed. This is equivalent to logic 1 as the input. You are going to place this lamp in its slot. The battery is there. This bubble represents the current flow. Let us take it as an electron. When this lamp is inserted into the slot, the current finds a path through the closed switch. Hence, what happens to the lamp? The resistance of this lamp is more than the resistance of this shorted path. So, obviously, current finds this path easier compared to going through this load. Hence, the lamp does not get current. Therefore, it is darkened. So, what we can derive from this is that when the input logic level is 1, the output logic level is 0. This is how we can interpret a NOT gate similar to a switching. We shall see how we have to implement these gates. Since these gates are to be put into the integrated circuits, we have to fabricate them on the integrated circuit. For this, we require the semiconductor devices and components such as resistors, capacitors and all. Here, you can see that a common emitter transistor can act as an inverter or NOT gate. Here, the input is the battery voltage and the output is measured output voltage is Y measured using this voltmeter. This transistor is a common emitter transistor that is emitter terminal is common to both input and output. Input is applied between base and emitter, output is taken between collector and emitter. When this transistor is applied with a collector voltage equal to 5 volts through a load resistance and the switch condition is open or closed. Under these circumstances, we shall see how this is going to behave as an in inverter. Now, you can see when the switch is open, the voltage is not applied to this base emitter junction. That is, the logic level of input is 0. Under these circumstances, when input A is 0, what happens to this transistor? The transistor obviously will be in cutoff condition. Since this base emitter voltage is 0, the transistor will be in cutoff condition. When the transistor is in cutoff condition, it is as good as an open circuit. Hence, the applied voltage will appear across this open circuit. So, between the collector and emitter terminals, all the applied voltage VCC should appear. That is, the output voltage should be high equal to 5 volts. Hence, what we can infer here is that when the input logic level is 0, the output logic level is 1. You can see that the voltmeter is showing full deflection and its output voltage is the voltage measured at the meter is equivalent to the collector voltage VCC. So, when input A is equal to 0, output Y equal to 1. This is same as the switch condition that we have seen. The opposite is the case when this transistor is applied with full voltage. You can see here the switch is closed and the voltage is applied to this. Under these circumstances, 
when the input voltage is given or when the input logic condition is 1, A is equal to 1, the transistor gets saturated. Hence, it is as good as a short circuit. So, across this short circuit, we are measuring the output voltage. Hence, it should be obviously 0 volts. Therefore, when the input voltage is at logic 1 condition, the output voltage is at logic 0. So, based on the previous one and the present inference, we can see that a common emitter transistor can act as an inverter. The next gate is the OR gate. Here you can see the symbol of an OR gate. OR gate has more than one number of inputs, but the output is single. Here, for example, we shall treat a two input OR gate, A and B are the input and uh, Y is the output points. Here you can see a curved ellipse like structure indicating the symbol of a OR gate. The R gate works on the principle that the output will be high if any one of the inputs are high. So, if A is high or B is high or both are high, the output condition Y will be high. So, if, y, if A is equal to 1 or B is equal to 1, Y will be equal to 1. This indicates the truth table of the OR gate that we have just discussed. When both inputs are 0, the output is 0. If any one input, here you can see B is the only input with high level of input that is logic 1 and in this case A is only the input with logic 1. In both these cases, the output is going to be 1. That is, the R gate requires that any one of the inputs should be high to get a logic 1 output. Even if both inputs are at logic 1 condition, then the output will be at logic 1 condition. The logical expression for the R gate is using the symbol plus. So, here the output will be Here, the output y equal to a plus b, y equal to a plus b is the logical expression. Now, we shall see how this R gate can be implemented using the switches. Like previous case, there is a load that can be inserted here. Here, there are two inputs, the switch 1 and switch 2. Here is the battery that is applied. So, when the load is inserted into its slot, and both inputs S1 and S2 are 0, under these circumstances, there is no path for the current to flow through this load. That is, both these paths are open and hence you can observe that the lamp is dark. In a second case, we shall see what is happening if one switch is closed indicating logic 1 condition and the other is open indicating logic 0 condition. When the load is inserted, the current finds a path through switch S1 which is closed and this causes a closed loop therefore current flows through the loop hence the load is glowing the lamp is glowing. So, if one input is high that is sufficient for the output to be high this is what we can derive as per the truth table and how we have implemented using the switches. We shall discuss the third case wherein the first switch is open and the second switch is closed. You see, when the lamp is inserted, 
the current finds a path through the closed switch S2. When current flows through this lamp, it glows. You can see a yellow glow in this. So, if any one of the input is at logic high condition, the output is going to be at logic high. When both switches are closed, that is both inputs are at logic 1 condition, what should be the output? You can see this. Here there are two paths, two closed paths for the current to flow through these two closed switches S1 and S2. When the lamp is inserted, in the beginning the current has two paths through S1 and also through S2. Upon the current flow, the lamp glows. You can see a yellow color indicating the glow through a lamp. So, when both inputs are at logic 1 condition, the output will be at logic 1 condition. This is what we can implement as per the truth table of the R gate using these switches and load. How to implement these R gates on the ICs? That can be done using two diodes. This two input R gate can be implemented using two diodes D1 and D2. There are two switches. When the switch condition is open, it indicates a logic 0 and when it is closed that indicates a logic 1 condition. Under the normal circumstances when both switches are open, if A and B are 0, both the diodes D1 and D2 are off because the anode is not supplied with any voltage. Hence, there is no current flow through this resistor. The output is the voltage across this resistor. So, when A and B are 0, both diodes are off and hence there is no current flow through this resistance and the output voltage is 0. That is under 0, 0 condition output logic level is 0. When one of the switches is closed, the corresponding diode here in this case D1 is the diode that is connected to the closed switch. Here the logic condition is 1, 0. In this case, when the switch is closed, the diode is forward biased and it is on. Hence, there is a path for the current to flow through this resistor. Hence, the output voltage will be high. Therefore, the logic condition of the output will be logic 1. You can see a high voltage measured by the voltmeter. The diode D1 is on whereas diode D2 is off. The third gate that we can implement as the basic gate is the AND gate. Here you can see the symbol of AND gate. This is a two input AND gate. It has one output Y. The symbol is take a straight line towards the inputs and then a curve on the output side. This is the symbol of a diode. The principle based on which the AND gate works is that the output condition is high only if all inputs are in high condition that is Y which is the output will be 1 if and only if A equal to 1 and B equal to 1. So, we shall see how to implement this. The truth table for this will be as per the law that we have seen. The output will be 1 only if all inputs are 1. Else in all cases output will be 0 even if one of the inputs are low or both inputs are low. So, output y expressed as 
a dot b as though we represent it as dot while spelling we should say and y equal to a and ed with b should be the notation used while expressing this orally the switch level operation of this and gate can be done by using two series switches the lamp will be placed in its holder and uh, the supply will be given to this lamp through the two series switches s1 and s2 this bubble indicates the current now in the first case when both switches s1 and s2 are open and the lamp is placed in its holder you can see that there is no path for the current to flow there is no closed loop hence the current will not flow it is very much at the battery only hence what happens to the lamp should it glow or not the lamp gets darkened in fact it doesn't get darkened only to represent it we say that it is dark indicating that it is not glowing so when input condition is a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0 the output condition is y is equal to 0 the second case is the one when one of the inputs is 0 and the other is in logic 1 condition this is a is equal to 0 b equal to 1 in this case what should be the output y the lamp is placed in its holder even if one of the switches is closed there is no closed path for the current hence there is no current flow therefore there is no glow through the lamp it is still not glowing the other case when the previously open switch is closed and the previously closed switch is open even in this case there is no path for the current and hence the bulb will not glow there is no glow so even in one zero condition the logic condition of the output is that y is equal to zero if a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0 now we shall see the last condition when both switches are closed this is equivalent to the input conditions a equal to 1 and b equal to 1 under these input conditions what are the output what is the output condition that is the glow through the lamp is expressed as the output logic level so when the lamp is placed in its holder we shall see what should be the current the current is finding a path now through this lamp so here is the closed circuit and hence current began flowing through the lamp therefore the logic condition of the lamp you observe the color of this now the lamp should glow so when both inputs are at logic 1 condition the output is also logic 1 this is the implementation of the AND gate using the switches analogy but how to implement these using the integrated circuits in ICs we fabricate the AND gate using diodes or we can using transistors also here simply using the diode here are the two input here is the, the two input and gate with two inputs a and b the output is the voltage across this resistor expressed as y when both inputs are at logic zero condition a is equal to zero and b is equal to zero this is you see grounded right grounded under these conditions what is going to happen this is the cathode and grounded and the anode is connected to the 
plus 5 volts supply. Similar is the case with D2, it is grounded to the cathode that is connected to the negative terminal of the battery whereas anode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Under on conditions you know that a diode acts as a shorted switch therefore it offers zero resistance similar is the case with D2. Now here are two short circuited paths and a high resistance path R. Now we can see that the current should flow through these diodes because they are of lesser resistance than compared to the resistance uh, load resistance R. Therefore, the current flows through these diodes D1 and D2 only. Since there is no current flowing through the resistance R, what we can expect as the voltage across it? Hence, the output voltage Y should be equal to 0. So, under logic 0 condition of the inputs A and B, A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0, output voltage condition Y should be equal to 0. What should be the case when one of the switches is closed? That is, in this case we are implementing that using a, a battery, this battery. So, A equal to 1 and B is equal to 0. Here, this is still grounded. Now, as though this is reverse biased, as though the input voltage is given, this diode D2 is still forward biased. So, the diode which is grounded will act as a short path for the current and hence the current flows through the on diode or the diode to whichever the logic 0 is applied. Even in this case the current through the resistor is 0. Therefore, the voltage across this resistor is still 0 only. Hence, under 1 0 conditions, 1 0 conditions, the output voltage is 0. Therefore, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, output Y equal to 0. This diode is acting as the path for the current. You can see a black color in this. Now, when both inputs are 1, what should happen? Both these diodes D1 and D2 should be off because they are reverse biased. The voltage applied here, you have to take care that the voltage applied here should be higher than the voltage at this point. In that case, this diode will be reverse bias. Similar is the case for this to put it under reverse bias conditions. Under these conditions, when A equal to 1 and B equal to 1, both these diodes D1 and D2 are off. Hence, you cannot expect current to flow through them. They are equivalent to open switches. Hence, the current should flow through this path through the resistor. Under this condition, the current flow through R will give rise to an output voltage Y equal to 1. Current has flown and you can see the output voltage Y at 5 volts which is treated as logic 1 condition. Dear students, till now we have seen how the logic gates are behaving and how we can implement them using the switches or using the diodes and transistors. These logic gates will be useful for you to build still bigger circuits. The other gates which we discussed such as the NAND gate and NOR gate can be constructed using these basic gates NOT, AND and OR gates. Now we shall see how to perform the experiments in your laboratory on these gates. 
this unit is called as a logic trainer. This has provision for input power supply and internally the ICs of different gates will be placed beneath this. Upon this there is provision for us to apply the inputs. So, these are all the points through which we can derive the input equal to plus 5 volts and using the output using this cable the output can be observed at the output terminals. These are all the output terminals. You can see a glow through these LEDs indicating a logic 1 condition and off condition of this LED indicates logic 0. There are various gates placed on this. Since our topic of discussion is only AND, AND, NOT and OR gates, we shall see how these gates behave when inputs are given. That is what should be the output condition when input is applied to them. See you can use this input slot and we shall see how a NOT gate behaves. See here this is the symbol that we have used for the NOT gate with a bubble and a triangle. The green knob is the point where we apply the input and the red knob is the point from where we take the output. The power switch is put on and we shall apply the various logic conditions for these switches. So, this is the way we have to apply the input. To this input point apply the input. From this point you take the output and give it to one of the slots on the output board. Now we shall try different combinations. Since the NOT gate has only two logic levels of input, since it has only one input, we shall see what happens when the input is 1 and 0. You see when this the switch connected to this input point is put off you can observe that LED is not glowing. See this is logic 1 condition and this is logic 0 condition. So, we are putting input equal to logic 0 that is applied to this NOT gate and output is taken from this point and connected to it. You can see a glow through this LED indicating that the output is 1. So, when input is equal to 0, the output is 1. This is how NOT gate behaves. When the input is put to logic 1 condition, what happens? You can see the LED glowing indicating that this is logic 1 condition. What happens to the output? It is dull. So, the output has come to logic 0 condition. A logic 1 in the input is converted into a logic 0 in the output. So, this is the operation of the NOT gate. We shall see how the other gates also behave. We shall take the AND gate. The TTL IC for AND gate is 7408. In fact, 4 such gates will be placed inside one IC. You can see one such IC and see how the IC will be placed. This is the IC. The IC will be 
this is these are the legs and uh, this notch a turn you can see at the top there is a notch from here we apply the logic high condition bcc and ground this ic consists of four such two input and gates when both inputs are 0 0 the output is 0 when one of the inputs is put high even then the output is 0 only when both are put 1 you can observe that the output is in logic 1 condition so this is the behavior of the AND gate when both inputs are in one condition. If it is n number of input AND gate, all the n inputs should be in logic 1 condition for the output to be under logic 1 condition. Now we shall see the behavior of OR gate. The IC 7432 is an IC which holds 4 OR gates. So, here you can see the out the inputs to input OR gate and the output is taken. See when both inputs are 0, 0, you can see that the output is 0. When one of the inputs is logic 1, this is logic 0 and 1. One of the inputs is 1. You can observe that output is logic 1. When both inputs are logic 1, still the output is under logic 1 condition. This is how we implement the various basic gates. So, dear students, in this session, we have known the Defini definition of a logic gate, what are the various logic gates, the AND or NOT are the basic gates. From these basic gates, we derive the universal gates called as NAND and NOR gates. In this session, we have seen the behavior of AND or NOT gates and also how they are to be implemented. In our next session, we shall see the NAND and NOR gates and see how they are useful to us. So, we shall meet in the next session to discuss about the universal gates, NAND gate and NOR gates. Thank you. Bye.